then we trusted for a house further for Cliff, and in evangelism found a guy, visited him, and in the end his dad died, and we bought that house for 250000 <laughs> And then the guy started to say, you must just tell me when you need my house. <laughs> I must just know if my time is over. <laughs> Pinpoint that house, shh. That house, six hours, shh. That house, less than a month. No, we broke that thing in Jesus' name. And from there on, it didn't work like that anymore, as far as I know. But uh, praise the Lord. But what am I saying, guys? With prophetic guidance, there's no way that I would ever have been able to buy a house. Not possible. What do I have? Two major, major miracles. So Cliff, Peter, Emil, for how many he owns. Through miracles it happened. And so I me that for your life also, there's a prophetic anointing on this ministry. And if you are part of it and you are in unity, you cannot manipulate anointing for your own sake. Hey? But when you draw, you're supposed to draw in that, that you've come into the flow of that what God wants to do. Because there's no time for you to waste your life for 20 years just paying off a house. Because God has extra things for you to do. So that must be sorted out. Not necessarily this specific pattern. But that you will know where to buy, when to buy, what house to buy. Yes, this is the right one. Here from the Spirit. Even though it's looking good. You know, you don't buy. Six months later you buy the same type of house. So much better quality. But... 500,000 less. And that makes a major difference in your life for what's going to happen in the future. You with me? So out of this whole thing of pointing and etc., etc., okay, there's the farm, there's the middle point, and then I had a word about a month ago of uh, 10 to the left, right, left, something, and then 14 kilometers on. And that brought me, when we looked at the maps, it brought me if uh, okay, I'm at this side. This is um, Nelson Mandela going out to Kimberley. Are you with me? Going out to Kimberley. This is Bloemfontein. And this is the farm there. So here was Kimberley Road. That side, when you go <laughs> out with Andres Pretoria Strat, then you will cross a street that will also go underneath the N1 to Glen. Just say yes, even if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then when I draw, I just felt in my heart, just look at the points. And the point of the farm at the top, and the point of 12 years ago there at the spa at the Damikis, and the point of copy scroll was exactly underneath one another. And with a 90 degree difference, straight to that side is that point of 14 kilometers. I took the same amount just to the other side, and that came to a crossing of Nelson Mandela and the street, the, the road going to, second road going to Tempe Airport. And I realized God wanted to do something because one, two, three, four, five points exactly lining up with one another over the city that God prophetically just pointed out. And I said, God, what do you want to do? And God just said to me, through the cross of Christ, He's giving us the city and we will have an impact through the cross of Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, what we're going to do, we're going to pray that that five points on the 25th, 21st, 21st of, where are we, October, 21st of October, that is a Monday afternoon, we're going to mobilize you guys and bring some guys with, that, guys that are saved, that can pray, that can stand in faith, are you with me, yes. not just friend for the sake of friend, that is like a time for for warfare, if I can say like that. So we need people, and you come with your friends that are serving Christ full out. Amen. Amen. 
And then we will go to the five points and pray there. But we, walk, we went there already to the one point, and that is the Sefer Ur School. You know what is the Sefer Ur School? Yeah. The Christelijke... What's it good? Christelijke Volks Onerig. In that school, no English. Redneck is allowed. And no Sutu Zulu speaking at all. But they stand for Christian education. So that's the point. And then we went there and we prayed. I asked the two guys, Jakob and Rieta, with me, just walk through the school premises as if you know what you're doing. And we prayed and we bound that racist demons in Jesus' name and et cetera, et cetera, and bless them that we will not judge them. And Lord, forgive us for judging them, pointing fingers and putting them in a box, but help them, Father, in Jesus' name had an appointment with a, with a headmaster and uh, said to him, no, 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 here we are, da, 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 da. And he said, no, he knows also the headmaster of the Christian school that we have. And uh, he was the headmaster there. Uh-huh. So I spoke to this headmaster that is in our congregation, that is headmaster of the Christian school and the Alke. He said, no, God spoke to him and he repented and he got out of that rubbish. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. But he, there's a guy in Kriari, that, uh, our father's home, that came to him as a headmaster a few times. He was really ministering to him. I said, Emil Furi. He says, yes. But he didn't come for, for quite a while. I said, uh hmm. <laughs> so I just explained that he's an administrator of the Christian school also, and I'm on him in visiting people in the church, etc., etc. But there's just this open door at that one point of the headmaster that. Emil can speak into his life. Let's trust the Lord that we will speak into his life and that we will change that place. That according to the, the truth of the Bible, education will be given in the right way in that place. Amen. In Jesus' name. And then went to the other side, to the other side of uh, the other point of 14 kilometers. Drove around there and then just a few, like uh, 300 meters from there, found a place, King's Haven. Who know about that place? King's Haven. No love. Okay. Made an appointment. Said, I just wanted to hear the vision. What are you doing? What is this place? No. Um, we are from the Eastern Cape. God showed us we must sell two farms. We must come here, buy this place and do something for God. I said, okay, praise the Lord. And uh, no, uh, for campground and for yeah, camps and things to be facilitated for churches and uh, also to plant a school. I said, what school? He said, the ACE school. I said, okay, small world because we are going to plant. We have an ACE school and we are building a premises for the ACE school. Now, and we know these people. Oh, we know all a lot of people. Who they know, we know. And at the end of the day, no, we are linked with Dr. Jonathan David from Isaac Network. Yes, 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 yes. We went there also and did the School of the Prophets in Malaysia. Now, come on. I don't know about anybody in Bloemfontein except from the other Isaac Church that did School of the Prophet. School of the Prophet in Malaysia. And it's just this point that we went to. Here is just this people. And uh, so we made a time to do prophetic counseling through five or ten questions. We had a, a time there. And uh, long story short, just one testimony out of the five uh, questions that we've done now in two and a half hours. I had a word uh, before the time that God wanted to touch one of your, your sons, that God wanted to do something in him. And the question they ask is, what son? Does God want to do this thing in, in his heart? And one of my answers was, son of righteousness. And she just started to laugh and said, that's the meaning of my son's name, son of righteousness. And so God, God is just arresting a situation there. And we are excited about that. And uh, No, but they visited once or twice here. They came with two crazy guys here. I said, who? No, Kenan and Keenan. 
No, they didn't say crazy guys. I said, okay, but they are living on my premises at my house. Etc., etc. I can carry on, and God just made this connection. Hello? Here in the center, there's an organization. Uh, uh, yeah, forget about that story. It's too long. So, all these five points we're going to go to, and we're going to pray there. And then, when we go there, we will organize the lifts and the transport so that half past five, everybody will be at the points. And that on that Monday, half past five, we will start to praise the Lord. Worship Him, declare, pray, do warfare, and then have communion. And then hear, God, what are you saying to us at that spot, right there? As we are in the Spirit, all together in unity in that point of the cross. Amen. In the demonic world, there are certain lines that, that the enemy uses. I say I believe that God prophetically gave us certain lines in the spirit that he's going to use. Amen? For his glory. Amen. But I want to challenge you. I want to urge you to get into the prophetic. To get into the prophetic. Because God will do amazing things for your life if you understand what he wants to do. When I was studying Greek, when we were still in Bible school and studying Greek, God showed me just once this place with a post box 31A and two trees and a, a upright driveway up, up the hill. And uh, so, and the more I was trying to study Greek, the more this picture came to me. So at the end of the day, I got into my fola. I had this fola kiveki. Hey, I love the fola kivekis. They could move. And uh, got in and I said, God, now where are we going now? And I just felt there at Oranya Macy School. Drove there and went up to the left like you would go to a Levenace. And just as I went up, Lord, what now? To the right, the first street. Went in there. Saw it as a kill the sack. And uh, went in until I was right there, and I killed the Zak. And as I stopped there, I looked to my left, and it was the exact picture of 31A, the post box, and the two trees, and the driveway up. I said, God, you want to do something here. And I say, my brother, my sister, you need to know about a job. You need to know what connection. It's not like you don't have a job. But there's certain connections that God wants you to have. Hear from the Holy Spirit. He will guide you with pots and pans. That you will have breakthrough for your life. You with me? Like that Gideon. And you will see breakthroughs that, so that you can focus on so much other priorities also. That God, what God has for your life. Amen? When there... Spoke to the man working in the garden? No. God said to me, husband and wife, not good. And son must give his life to Christ. No. After two hours, here's this professional lady coming out. She was the superintendent of Universal's Hospital, a medical doctor. And now you must think, no, I'm a student. And I, while I was studying Greek, I got the vision. And I got in a car and I drove straight to your house. And God has given me a word to you. I mean. So she just gave me a telephone number. Yes, phone me again. But I know. She's just going to say, not interested, thank you. So I just rocked up there again. And uh, one Saturday morning, sun opened up. Yes, yes. She came down the stairs. I told you not to come here. Sorry, but God showed me something about your son also. He said, 15 minutes because we have an appointment. Okay. So she should, you know, that body language of... Get over it. And uh, start to speak to him. God showing me a lot of things. As I was speaking to him, she cracked up. Okay. <laughs> Took hands. He gave his life to Christ when I said, Amen. She packed out for two hours. Never mind the 15 minutes. <laughs> about life. And a lot of things. And uh, her husband was the, the dean of the medical 
I can't. Faculty. Of the medical faculty, Dr. Katnell. I don't know if some of you would know him. No. But in any case, he was the dean and that was her husband. He moved out already. When I talked about the marriage, I said, something in your marriage that needs to be addressed. And she said that. He moved out already. Talked to her after two hours. She gave her life to Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said, can I speak to him wherever he is? He said, he will not listen to you. And uh, so I went to him, this dean of the medical factory. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I must just get you awake, man. And uh, went to him. I explained the whole story, how he, I got to his wife and what happened. And he was sitting like that. You know, like a psychiatrist. <laughs> and after a while, he just bent over and said, Meneer van Heiningen, you don't expect me to believe you, hey? <laughs> I said, no, I don't expect you to believe me, but this is really how it happened. And uh, so, his Duomini told him he can divorce his wife and marry his first wife again. So, um, that was it. I prayed for him and I spoke and there was ministry, but later I heard before he died, he was working with a Bible, he was having with a Bible in his office, he was part of a group, a Christian group at the university. That lady, the doctor from the next day, she was part of a, a Christian group where I knew somebody that worked with her in the physiology department of the university, etc., etc. Guys, and God could take hold of this man, take hold of that woman. Are you with me? Take hold of that son that was in desperate, desperate situations. But while I'm supposed to study Greek, you studying at university, be sensitive in the spirit. When I came back, it went very well with Greek. 